Hey guys, and welcome back to another Something in About 5 Minutes. We're going to wrap up February here, National Heart Month, talking about a cardiac med that every single EMS provider is able to carry and give. And that's nitroglycerin, so let's get started. So as I said, nitroglycerin is able to be given by everybody. So here in this video, I want to outline the information that you guys need to know to better understand the drug that you can be either assisting or giving as an EMT and paramedic. All right, so nitroglycerin is in a class of drugs called a nitrate. And how nitrates work is when given, nitroglycerin forms a free radical called nitric oxide. This nitric oxide uh, within the bloodstream activates chemicals, which then in turn create a vasodilation response or a relaxation of smooth muscles, which is your vasculature, right? Smooth muscles make up your vasculature walls. So those vasodilate or get bigger, all right? The typical dose that we see in EMS is 0.4 milligrams per sublingual dose. Whether this be a tablet or a spray, it really doesn't much matter, but from my research, I've seen 0.3 milligrams, I've seen 0.6 milligrams, but typically the most popular that I've seen for EMS agencies is 0.4 milligrams sublingual. Now with the life of the medication, typically it takes one to three minutes for this medication to begin its onset of uh, action. Within five to 10 minutes, we are now in that peak of action. However, in higher doses of nitroglycerin, you can see effects lasting all the way up to 30 minutes. So that's pretty cool. For the indications that you guys need to be aware of, we're gonna start with chest pain, angina pectoris, okay? The next is acute myocardial infarction, otherwise known as a heart attack. If you believe that the signs and symptoms of the patient that you're providing care to are having a heart attack, that is enough for you to be able to give uh, nitroglycerin for the MI and also the associated chest pain for the with the MI. The last thing is pulmonary edema, specifically with hype, hypertension, okay? We will come around to that uh, shortly after, okay? So, with indications, you also need to know your contraindications. Your contraindications uh, specifically is blood pressure, okay? That is your main, other than being allergic, that is your main contraindication, okay? And again, we'll get to why exactly uh, in the next slide here. But what we want is a systolic pressure above 120. So, we want to make sure that this blood pressure is not 120 and above and that is new york state specific so national registry i've seen floating around numbers like uh, 100 systolic it needs to be over 100 systolic i've also seen uh different papers and and articles and studies that say have to have a map above 65 just make sure that you're following your local protocol for this my local protocol says it has to be above 120 systolic the other contraindication is if your patient has taken any erectile dysfunction drugs like Cialis, uh, Viagra, Sildenafil, and Levitra within the last 24 hours. Again, we don't want to drop the blood pressure because of this vasodilation and blood pooling in other different parts of the body. Lastly, we need to talk about our side effects, right? Dizziness, headache, the hypotension, which is the big one, flushing, nausea, and reflex tachycardia. Reflex tachycardia is going to happen when you produce the hypotension via the nitroglycerin and that vasodilation. The body's going to try and uh, increase heart rate to try and keep perfusion maintained at a regular level. So I want to lastly leave you guys with why we're giving nitroglycerin in these type of situations. What is it actually doing to benefit? Okay, and really quickly, when we give it in chest pain and or a myocardial infarction, we're giving it to decrease the, the workload and oxygen demand of the cardiac muscle. And how it does that is it decreases preload and afterload, and in turn decreases the oxygen um, workload of the heart muscle. The heart isn't trying to pump as hard under as much stress 
So it's using less oxygen. When we become, when the heart muscle becomes hypoxic, it becomes agitated and it creates pain signals that go to the brain and then you have chest pain. So these associated symptoms like angina is typically caused by a hypoxic cardiac muscle. So if we decrease the workload of the heart, we're decreasing the oxygen demand, which then in turn will decrease the pain associated with that hypoxic cardiac muscle. The last, the last thing I want to talk about is the use in pulmonary edema and why we give it within, uh, within the, con the confines of CHF. And that is for giving the fluid within the lungs a place to go. So we have CPAP on our patient and we give aggressive sprays of nitro depending on blood pressure. And what is, what's that going to do is it's going to open up the pulmonary vasculature and vasodilate it, giving it more space so that CPAP can then push the fluid out of the alveoli and into the vasculature space where fluid belongs. And this way, decreasing the amount of fluid first in the lungs and increasing the ability for the lungs to perfuse and oxygenate the body, decreasing shortness of breath. So that's why we give it in chest pain and that's why we give it in CHF with hypertension. So guys, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.